Oh, hi. Uh, this is my first Homebrew Wednesday, and hopefully this becomes a little more of a regular thing. We'll see. Who are you? What's your story? Good question, strange person in my house. Uh, my name is Aaron. I live in Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. Where? The five O's, man. It's halfway between Milwaukee and Madison. So I've been brewing since about 2010, so about five years. My buddy Josh, uh, link in the doobly-doo to his channel, made a uh, beer that was really some awesome. He's never been able to reproduce it. Uh, it, was, it was quite a funny story. He used a strainer and a, a small cooler. He had no idea what he was doing, but it was great. Got me interested in this. Uh, with his help, I brewed a brown extract kit, and it was just, it wasn't all that good, but I really loved the concept of it and had a, such a good time. I think I brewed one or two more extracts, and then went all in with straight up with, with all grain. So my wife has been very supportive and great about this whole thing, so much so that the third stall in our new house is a brewery. So uh, let's go take a look at the brewery and see what's going on. I know, I know. In my defense, I did brew 30 gallons of home brew for a work party and it was all gone in about four and a half hours. It was great. And they all popped within five minutes of each other, which is very rare because usually you have one or two that are a big hit. So you can tell by my Germany kit here is that uh, I've become a very big fan of Germany. I just love Bavaria. Uh, I love the people. It reminds me of the Midwest. Uh, they have big reverence for beer and it's just, it's just absolutely great. So here's a picture of me at uh, Augustiner Breu in Marine Platz. It's our first time in Germany and this is me drinking a Helles and it is it just changed my mind about um, what German beer can really be. So I've been chasing that dream for, for a while here is to finally make a really good German beer. So uh, that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to put on my sweet German hat and uh, let's, let's take you through a brew day of a double decoction Bavarian Hefeweiss. The first thing we did is made a three and a half liter starter. It was only going to spin for about 24 hours, so big is good. Next morning, made some coffee. Important to be caffeinated for these kinds of things. We drank it, and we got started. We started with eight pounds of Turo, eight pounds of wheat, and two pounds of Munich, and it's a protein rest. It's not a brew day unless you're drinking something. In this case, this is Castile. It's a Belgian triple, uh, the malt shop in Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. Link to them in the doobly-doo term neon to it. It's a very crisp and easy to drink triple. So some ask, why do I do a decoction? I was uh, talking with Gordon Strong on Twitter about this a little bit, and he mentioned that he does it for the mouthfeel, and I decided to go for it. And I think he's right. It's a kind of a big pain in the butt but it really gives a nice round uh, mouthfeel. If you feel like your hef is just kind of missing something in, in the middle, missing a little body, uh, this is the answer. So what we're doing is we turn off the pumps, remove, um, pull over the boil kettle, and we're gonna remove 11.3 quarts, I believe it was, uh, for the first decoction. It took about 25 minutes with medium heat to bring it up to a boil. I didn't want to risk scorching the grain or um, uh, bringing too much color in, so I did it a nice, gentle um, heat rise. Made for a long day. So it's been 10 minutes on the boil, and it's time to return it. So I killed the heat, I pulled over the boil kettle, and I used the uh, quart scoop to pull some out until I could pick it up and dump it all in. We missed the rise by about 6 degrees, but our Herms tube was able to compensate over a couple of minutes. It's been about 20 minutes, it's time for the second decoction. So we did the same thing, killed the pump, killed the um, Herms tube, and we pulled out this time about 1.5 gallons, or about 7 quarts. And then uh, it only took about 5 minutes to get it up to a boil, and uh, same thing, a nice low heat to make sure we didn't scorch. It's the second return. Same deal, use the quart scoop and uh, put as much as we can back into the kettle and then we lift and we empty it in there. Boy, it makes quite a mess. You gotta make sure you clean it up before you start the boil. It's been about 80 minutes later. I don't need to show you a boil, it's, it's boiling. We do a gravity check. It came in at about 10.48, 10.49. Um, we'll do a hydrometer pull a little later. Boil is done, we're just cooling it with the counterflow, we're circling it back into its itself. It uh, doesn't cool fast enough to do directly out of the kettle. 
So the thing you gotta do here is, you know, close all the valves. All of the valves. We pulled the sample to verify our readings with the hydrometer, and it came in at about 1049. I'd call it about 1050 when all is said and done. Uh, we, once it cooled a little further, it um, increased just enough to hit 1050. So 1050 it is. Hey, moron. It's a left-handed thread. Left-handed. What do I do with my spent grain? I give it to our local CSA farm, and they use it to feed their chickens to make delicious eggs. If you're in Lake Country, consider a Three Brother Farm linked to them in the doobly-doo. Uh, they run a great CSA, and they're just all-around great people. So it's the next day, and everything seems to be going pretty well. It's a nice snowy day out today. It's Super Bowl Sunday, just in case you're wondering what relative day it is. So thanks for watching. Um, hopefully... I keep this up and uh, yandu.